Welcome back to Horn Throws. Rob here. We were sent an advanced lesson of time part two. After all this time, it's time for time two. Is it worth the wait? I'm going to say as an initial reaction to it, yes, it is. It is fun. Fantastic. Yes, that's not that's not too high praise. I worried after the first lesson that I had somewhat overhyped myself with this album because, uh, you know, that like, you know, 10 plus year gap, wait, waiting for time two. But after such a colossal wait and time part one being such a formational kind of like album for me when getting into metal and also Winterson's previous self-titled release, and I don't think any album that they released could have stood up to that hype. We have the intro track, Fields of Snow. I felt that this was incredibly overindulgent. It didn't need to be there. It's three minutes long and it's very reminiscent of uh, When Time Fades Away, the intro track from Time Part One. Uh, it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but I and Olivia also agreed when we were sitting down to listen to it that it would have benefited just having a cold open with the first actual song on the album, which is The Way of Fire. Now, The Way of Fire is like a 10 plus minute epic winter sun track. It's exactly what you're expecting it to be. It's very reminiscent of something like Suns of Winter and, Sons of winter and Stars off the first uh, Time album. Uh, it's very good. The main melody, driving kind of like melody that they keep coming back to as a refrain is just epic. Um, much better for me on the second list and I, as I said hype was very very much a issue for me like I feel like I did overhype myself for this album a lot so second subsequent listens with good headphones the album hit a lot stronger for me and I walked away very very happy I feel like the soloing on Way of Fire is very self-indulgent at times like it feels like a three or four minute solo uh, I could be wrong on that but it feels like that mostly sweet picking and it just feels to borrow a phrase from the great Devin Townsend wanky guitar that's not to say that it's not impressive but it's it's not sort of like coherent with the song and doesn't serve the song which is what I feel guitar solos and bridges in music should be the next track on time two is one with the shadows now kind of taking the criticisms that i had for the first track it's uh I almost flipped that on its head it's a much slower more subdued song still heavy and the solos on this song uh use sweet picking as a embellishment to the rest of it and it feels more cohesive and for want of a better term like you know like musically linear and it's all like there's actually like a, a a road map what they want to do with that song so carrying on with the sort of track by track here the next track was a real standout to me uh it's only like a short instrumental track that serves as an intro to the song storm but ominous clouds which thematically it kind of builds the tension and it is the the calm before the storm which i kind of like enjoy that when like kind of music and storytelling kind of like line up like that it's it's a real sweet spot for me um it has like a blues kind of feel to it it's like it is like very it was like very surprising it still somehow manages to have both a blues element to it but using a lot of the kind of like oriental phrases that are present in both time albums which is something i'll talk about later on in the review when we're talking about silver leaves because that's kind of probably uh, exemplifies that the most but obviously both of these albums have taken massive inspiration from East Asian music and that's like very present here but also blending that with blues and it kind of provides a very soulful kind of uh, refrain before we go into a much more chaotic song that is Storm. Uh, yeah there's not like a great deal to say about this song that's not that's not uh, a criticism. It, this is like what it says on the tin. If like ominous clouds was the calm before the storm, storm is the big bombastic kind of winter sun song, uh, very melodic, very fast paced. Finally, we have the last track on the album, which is Silver Leaves. It's a very good song. Uh, yeah, Silver Leaves is a really nice way to kind of wrap up the whole time saga. Uh, however, 
I will say that the few minutes of static noise at the very end, I, I kind of get what he was going for. It meant to be this like fading, washing out thing. It just annoyed me. And it, uh, me and Olivia listened to it together and we both kind of like walked away with the whole, like, is that it? We were expecting some kind of like last little thing to come in and hit us. And it, it just kind of, yeah, I, I get what he was going for. That like way of ending the album kind of left me a bit cold. Uh, one thing that really stood out is uh, Yari's vocals on this album. They have improved vastly in the 10 years, and I know that he's had the decision to be a singer, like first and foremost, and to not play guitar live. However, that makes me incredibly sad because listening to some of the guitar work on this album, mate, he's too good of a guitarist to just focus on vocals. That being said, there are like fry screams on this, there are like falsettos, there are, he, he's very acrobatic in terms of vocals on this album. Uh, it's impressive uh, to see that kind of jumping quality. The polished production at times can feel soulless. However, the album is solid. It is a worthy success at a time too. I was not disappointed by this. I will be returning to it and listening to it many, many more times. But yeah, my overall impressions of the album are that it was a very good album worthy follow-up to time too. However, I feel like I overhyped myself for this album and that nothing that Winterson released could have really lived up to that hype. And that's why I had to go back for subsequent listens uh, to really um, absorb the album and appreciate it on its own merits and not in comparison to the nostalgia that I have for the rest of the discography. And also it's hard to separate it from the rocky road and all of the drama and crowdfunding and, you know, just craziness. There's a great video that I will link in the description that kind of documents the entire ridiculous saga that took us to get here for time two. Yeah, so if you liked what you saw here, please consider subscribing to the Horn Throwers YouTube channel where we talk about metal and like really get into the kind of depths of the subculture there. Uh, we've got interviews with various bands, we do reviews, we do a podcast, we also have an online magazine that you can check out, link in description, currently under maintenance, but hopefully up and running by the time this video comes out. Uh, we also have a three-hour metal radio show on Callan FM that you can check out as well. But yeah, if you liked what you saw, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and please let me know what you thought of Time Part 2, and was it worth the wait after all this time?